I'm here. Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. You got, let's see here. Let me just take it off. Uh, unpin video. There you are. See me. Okay. One sec. Yeah, I, I got you. We got a group coming on now. We're streaming Facebook live. What a pleasure. I don't know that we've ever met your buddy. Can you see the screen behind me, Jeff? Yeah, I got you for sure. Yep. Yeah, well, you're on, you're on here uh, because you were, um, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Jeff Glover said, basically, I needed another rock star. And he said, well, give Jeff a call. And uh, Jeff put and I said, okay, I'd be happy to. And so I've been doing a little bit of uh, research on you. Jersey Shore. Now, I've been up there once. So I know you're a little bit south of Atlantic City. Yeah. I've got a friend of mine, Paul Chiolo in Keller Williams. You know Paul in Wildwood? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I know you guys are tight. I know you, Chris, are real, real tight with Paul and for a long time, back in the star power days, right? That's exactly right. Back in the black and white days, back in the eight track days, when we just listened to all the eight tracks. So That's it, man. Yep. So anyway, uh, I saw that you have Mr. Wonderful uh, as an endorser. Are you also part of Rate? No, I've never been part of Rate. I, I mean, I've hung out with a lot of those guys and, and, uh, and, and so forth, but I had just gotten that made directly just from, from, uh, from Kevin. Yeah. Great endorsement. Well, 5,000 transactions. You're about 20, and you're about where I am. However, you're 20 or 25 years younger than me. So I'm a little <laughs> bit jealous. Tell us a little bit about you and um, uh, for the group here and maybe what your contact information is if they have any referrals for you. Sure. No, I appreciate that. Well, it's an honor and pleasure to be here. So thank you. Um, so, you know, my name is, is Jeff Quinn. I live and work in Ocean City, New Jersey. So it's Southern New Jersey. Um, and I've uh, been in the business since 1992. And I primarily work in a resort vacation, you know, um, secondary home market. We also serve the primary home market as well, but we cover anywhere between like Brigantine, New Jersey, all the way down to Cape May. So if you could just picture the southern part of New Jersey, um, it's about 40 mile radius. And then also from there, we've also expanded in other markets in the greater Philadelphia area. And I have another uh, full on real estate business team um, of an independent I brought in the KW last, last year in the Outer Banks, North Carolina. There's about 20 agents that are there um, as well. So that, and that's going through a shift, you know, with certain things we're doing there. But um, so, you know, that's kind of the background, um, you know, doing it for quite a bit of time and, and our, our with, with um, relative to, to your, your content and what you're up to now is, is you know, our, our team itself has always been very heavily prospecting based, um, heavily scripted. Uh, and that's just part of our culture, what we do each day, and a lot of accountability structure, you know, behind outbound prospecting. Well, that's awesome, because that's why you hit the 5,000 sale number before I did, because I was kind of marketing-based, and instead of lead generation-based, and, and that's kind of the way to go. So, um, are you ready to get started? Yeah, man. Sure. All right. So, uh, oh, just uh, what number, and so I don't forget to ask you, what number, uh, somebody oh. wanted to send you a referral. I've got your information up here, the, I guess, the, the quintongroup.com what number should they use jeff sure no direct to me i mean i'll give you my my cell or my office either one my cell is 609-602-8488 um and again email is jeff at the quintongroup.com you can also hit me up on any social sites uh at jeff quinton so if you have anybody referring to southern new jersey we'd greatly appreciate it we'll make you look like a look like a rock star for sure and i do want to ask this one question how are you doing because from what we can hear uh, your be are you still closed on your beaches? Are people still able or wanting to buy or sell real estate on the island? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, our beaches are open. Um, our boardwalk is is open. I mean, things itself are are functioning. Uh, New Jersey, just as of yesterday, though, we were going to as of tomorrow or Thursday, we're going to go twenty five percent capacity in indoor seating. Our governor just took that away yesterday. So, uh, outdoor seating right now, as far as restaurants are, are is what's been happening. Um, sales itself, resort, vacation, home market for us. We, we primarily, our, our clients come from the Philadelphia area. Um, it's been thriving. We've been, we've had incredible uh, last two months. May was off the charts. Um, you know, June was so far, and today has been through. Today has been really good. Um, low inventory. I mean, lowest inventory we've seen in a long time. Huge demand. Something's priced right. Shows well. There could be. For everyone, good listing, three three buyers right now, for sure. Well, that's true. And I guess I did the, uh, if you weren't on the call on Thursday, I was sharing with what Gary said in his last mastermind. And he basically said, go get those sellers that should be in the market that aren't, as that's a real opportunity. So here's the thing I want to start with. Um, and I've been thinking about this, you guys. 
if you have a conversation, maybe with one of those sellers that are sitting on the fence, and there's some buyers on the fence too, uh, and here's the question you may want to ask them. If you could wave a magic wand, would you like to be moved from wherever they are to wherever they want to go? It's either primary or secondary home. And to the, to the degree in which they answer yes would be their level of motivation. Here's, here's kind of my aha, you guys. So if they have a goal to get from X to Y, what's stopping them? And again, it depends on their motivation. However, there are a lot of people, I think, basically are acting like their feet are in cement right now. And I can tell you, this is my theory, you guys, and I'm just thinking through this. What's stopping them is the process. They think it's harder than it needs to be. They think it's longer than it needs to be. They think there's more pain in it than there needs to be. Case in point, five years ago or four or so, I was diagnosed with my dentist, which I don't enjoy going to. Like a lot of people may not enjoy going to a real estate office. And he said, I've got a, a tooth problem. And so I said, I'll, I'll wait on it, wait on it, wait on it, because I did not want to go through the process. Well, five years later and some pain and worry that it would break while I'm traveling, I finally went through it. And here's what I discovered, you guys. The process wasn't as bad as I thought. Now, it only works. This only works, you guys, if you basically have the mindset that you can make it easy for them. If you also agree, like, well, I don't blame you. I wouldn't buy or sell in this market either. You're not going to be of any help, okay? So, again, it has to do with your mindset. We've used the analogy before about the chessboard. And so we're going to go into this with, with Jeff on a, a celebrity role play. We've not talked at all about it. In fact, Jeff's moving so fast, I, I, I'm surprised that I have him for an hour. Maybe I don't even have him for an hour as busy as he is. However, let me just review, uh, Jeff, the celebrity role play rules. You are the celebrity. You're the honored one here today. You get to choose the, the role, buyer or seller, and the scenario, which I don't have any earthly idea. You can, you can choose the degree of difficulty, one to 10. I, I don't think you'll be a one. Nobody learns from a one, and 10 is probably in the crazy category. Unrealistic. I don't know if you can close a 10. And as you know, I have no advanced knowledge. So I'm ready to take notes. I guess uh, I've attempted to do these like in like five minutes. I've even had sunny time it like for five minutes. It really isn't enough time because I don't think you're going to have an appointment with a buyer or seller and you're going to go from A to Z in five minutes. So I'm not going to take an hour. I may take 10 minutes. I want to review some of the things we've been working on for, for your review because this is about mastering question-based listening enhanced conversational scripts, right? We're just not going to like vomit all over them how much information we have and so we'll we'll spend some time in fact jeff if he wanted to he could even put a limit on it you could give me a time frame like okay you got 10 minutes or you're only going to have 15 questions now jeff i don't know if you know this or not however we've been practicing um and there's more than one way to play a chess match going back to that metaphor question-based scripts and so anyway why don't you then give me the scenario. Are you going to be a buyer or seller? Okay, so so I'm going to be the realtor and you're going to be the seller and I'm going to present my script. Is that what you mean? No, we'll do that next. Okay, I'm going to be the seller. Okay, I'll be a seller. Okay, you're, whatever one, the, the, I'm going to reverse it and let you be the, the uh, agent because we want to Perfect. hear your no, so, no, I'll be a seller. I'll be a seller. You're the seller, okay? And what is, we are meeting at the table. Okay. And... And uh, what is your scenario? You are selling because of what? Uh, let's just make it easy. Let's say it's a job transfer. Oh, you don't have to be easy. <laughs> let's just say a job transfer. I'm moving to Florida from New Jersey. This is something you probably experience. Every day, every day. Okay. All right. So just so you know, this is what we work on. Really quick review for the people on here. Question-based, listening to enhanced conversational scripts. And the more I do this, Jeff, you probably know, know uh, this is no secret to you. Uh, agents, when you finally get them to learn some scripts, they start like, they're so proud they've learned the scripts, scripts, they quit listening. And if we listen to people, they'll sometimes give us the key to unlock their motivation, right? So we follow the model, acknowledge, isolate, address and close. And I'm gonna do my best, unpack him, unload him before I unpack. There's the examples of acknowledgement. You can take screenshots of this. This will be on my website, don't worry about it. And this is where most agents kind of go sideways. They start uh, going down the road of answering a concern before they know all the concerns. So I like to use a metaphor. 
get to the center of the Tootsie Roll pop, right? If you're a doctor, make sure you know where to cut before you start operating. Find out where the pain point is. Really quick, for those on, on, on the call, the scripts we've gone over quite a bit, meat thermometer, one to 10, what I know for sure script, um, how would you like to have your cake and eat it too? And of course, the side effects script. So, uh, Jeff, we are at your table. And uh, Sonny, if you're taking, if you're there, I want to see if I can't do this, unless you put a time limit on me, or would you put a number question limit on, on me, Jeff, to make it even more difficult? Well, just whatever you think. I mean, we, we can do it, do it. We'll run for 10 minutes, let's say, and, and uh, let's make it a, a difficulty of a seven. Seven? Eight. No. Go the wrong way. All right. I don't care. It's okay. So here's the deal. So thanks for having me over, Jeff. Let me ask you a question. You're getting moved to For Florida, right? Yeah, we're planning to move to Florida, correct. Awesome. So let me ask you, meat thermometer question coming up next. Based on your opinion of the market, no right or wrong, how, do you think the market's working in your favor as a seller right now or working against you? Well, you know, I was hoping that maybe you could tell me what the market's doing. I, I'm kind of confused. I, I see some houses still sitting in the market. I see others selling fairly quickly. So, um, you know, I think that uh, uh, it's, it's more in my favor, but I, I really need to get, a, you know, the highest price I can. Got it. I understand you need the highest price. And when do you need to be in Florida? Well, we really wanted to be there, you know, by, by the time kids go back to school, if they go back to school. So, uh, you know, by September would be great. So September, you'd like to be moved into place in September? We would like that. Yeah, it'd be great. We now, would, yeah. notice you guys, I've got 10 minutes and I know a lot of people want to go, where in Florida are you going? I used to be in Florida. I want this. Here's the thing, you guys, in my opinion, so I'm just doing a little sidebar here, Jeff. In my opinion, stay on the point until you're, until you're off point because we only have X number of minutes of their attention. So I would stick to the 20%, not the 80%. Because yes, I want to find out where they're going. Maybe I can refer them all those. So I think that's 80% right now. True or false, it's just the way I play the chessboard. So let me ask you, Jeff, are you in the process of, have you already decided to hire me to be your agent to get you moved to Florida? Or are you be going, or going through the interview process? Well, we, we are interviewing some agents and, uh, you know, you, you are, you've come very highly recommended. So uh, we would love to hear what you have to say. So again, a little sidebar. What do you want to know as an agent now? Here's the thing. Ask the questions you really want to know. Just ask them in a way you might get an answer instead of getting shown to the door. So let me ask you, thanks so much for that, you know, and I appreciate that. So are you saying that this is my game to lose today? Yeah, I would have to say that for sure. Now, isn't that what you really want to know? And, you know, he's, he's actually, the people from the Northeast used to scare the crap out of me because I'm Midwestern. So, okay, so let me ask you then, you've gone through the interview process. What criteria are you going to select what criteria is important to you to hire your agent to get you moved to Florida? Stop, just for a second. Notice I don't say get your home sold. That's not their goal. I'm repeating their goal. What is it? Get them to Florida by September, right? All right, so what criteria, Jeff? Uh, you know, I guess uh, we wanna know what kind of what kind of price you can get for us. Um, uh, you know, we gotta get as much as we can, what your commission's going to be. Uh, and we wanna make sure that an agent we hire it, you know, has a track record and understands our market. Okay. Other than that, anything else? So here's what I'm doing. I'm getting all the suitcases out of the car. Just because he's stopped to take a breath, that doesn't mean there's not more in there, right? And we don't want to play whack-a-mole. So other than price, you mentioned you're talking about the fee and you're talking about track record. What else is important to you and your agent? Uh, you know, we just want to have good communication. You know. Okay. Notice how that one just slipped in there. Are we at the center of the Tootsie Roll Pop yet? All right. Other than that, Jeff, what else? I think that's, you know, I think that would probably be about it. Okay, now he may be telling the truth, may not. And you, he may have a spouse or a significant other next to him or partner, who knows what. And you better turn the conversation to the other person. Just because one person unloaded doesn't mean you know everything. So we'll just assume that uh, the wife's already in Florida and, and he's the decision maker. That would never be the case probably. Okay. So of, of the four things you mentioned there, Jeff, let me just ask you, which one is the most important to you right now? Uh, I guess I would say price. Yeah, we really, we got to get as much out of the house as we can. So are you saying that if we got together on price, that, that there's a good chance we're going to do business today? Well, if you feel, yeah, I mean, if I feel confident, you can get what we need. 
Okay. And what is that number? Um, you know, we, we had in mind, uh, we would like to hear from you what you think the home is worth. Um, and you can give that to me. But, uh, I mean, look, it, we, we really want to get 350000 for this home. We put a lot of money into it, Danny. We put a lot of money. As you can see, we redid the kitchen. We have new granite in here. I redid the, the, all the appliances. In fact, our master bath we just did. Um, so we, we put a lot of money in it. And, you know, this is going to be our last move. So we're, we're moving to Florida. We need every dollar we can. I totally understand. Uh, now, before I get going too fast, it, we need clarity around 350. Is that what he's expecting to sell it for? Is that what he's expecting to net? You better understand that before you start going down this road, because isn't that what you want to know? Ask the questions you want to know. So just for clarity, Jeff, are you saying 350 is what you want to sell it for? Or you think that's what you want to net when you walk away from closing? Oh, no, I mean, we, we understand that there's commission involved. Uh, we, we feel that the sales price would be close to 350 Okay. So if we agree to list the 350 today, would you be ready to move forward? Well, I'd like to see what your marketing plan is and, and, uh, and how you're going to do that. But, uh, but yes, that's the price we'd like to get. Okay. Um, when you, okay, so... Now here's where here is where I'm actually going to be. I'm going to I'm 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 not stumped. I, I I'm thinking about now. He just laid something else on me that didn't come out before. Now this is going to happen in real life. He mentioned uh, communication, price, commission, and track record. What did he just do? He said marketing. You're in the marketing, marketing plan. Now that's dirty pool, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let me ask you, this marketing plan, would a mark, now watch this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an end run on him, would marketing plan equate to what you mentioned earlier, meaning track record, meaning if you had a good track record, you, that means you have a good marketing plan? Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we'd like to know that you, you understand our market and you can get us that, that price, you know, and um, that's important to us. And, I want to make sure you can you're the right person to handle it okay now, now i'm getting a little fuzzy so again you don't have to give me any insight i'm getting a little fuzzy okay so then help so my marketing plan so you might have to give them some information just understand the marketing plan has no bearing on whether you sell that house or not it's it's whether or not you're going to get it at a price that's going to be palatable to the market so um and i don't and we don't have comps so i'm not you know i i, I would you would know going in there, it was 350, is this guy smoking sweet and low or is it, you know, is he being somewhat realistic, right? So, however, he, he can get you on this question. So, here's the things that we do, our tracker, you know, we do this, we do this, we do this. Does this sound like the marketing plan you're looking for? Sounds pretty good to me. You're gonna have to do something. I just had to do a letter for someone for a million dollar house. Let me just say, Yes, we have to prove our worth. Uh, although this is a very realistic role play. He brought up marketing plan and the marketing plan really is part of the dog and pony show. So then let's just assume then, Jeff, that the marketing plan is okay. Then, then is it onto a pricing decision right now? Well, yeah, I, I think that, uh, I mean, it sounds like you know how to get the home sold. It sounds like you, you sold other properties here. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, do you think you can get me 350? Well, I don't know. I can just tell you, basically, let, let me just share with you the similar homes in your marketplace. Remember, you had just said you're a little bit unsure because you're seeing some property sell and some other ones sit, right? Right. So were you aware that the National Association of Realtors just came out with an article that said uh, home sales in May were the slowest they've been in 10 years? Would that surprise you? I would assume, yeah, I, I could see that. So, and then are, have you been seeing the news that maybe the, the, the COVID numbers are starting to increase around the country? Do you think that's a plus or a minus for you selling? I think it's, a, it's probably a more of a minus right now. People, uh, you know, not, not wanting to show their homes, I'm sure, getting strangers sure. in there. So I understand the 350 is the number and you want to net more money in your pocket. And if, just looking at the past sales, you see 327, 333, and there was one here at um, 339. There's, there hasn't been anything in that range thus far. So is it possible? Maybe. However, 
can you see based on the past sales where 350 may be a challenge? Well, again, we put a lot of money into this house. I just feel our house is a, is a little bit nicer, you know, because what we've done to it compared to those other homes. Um, so, you know, somebody in those other homes, those, those kitchens were dated. We have a brand new kitchen. Yes, I, I, I noticed that. So let me ask you, it's probably if anyone can get you 350, it would be me. So if we listen to 350, here's my question. We're, and I, I, have no, I have no concerns of doing that. However, here, here's the question that's important. What will you do, Jeff, if the market says no to 350? Wow. Uh, you know, we're not sure. I guess I'll have to... I mean, I guess at some point, if we don't get it sold, we'll have to reduce it. Right. Well, and we can't do that. So here, here's my concern. If you, you see that with the conversation we just had where theoretically every day you wake up because the market's drifting away from you, your house is worth less. Should you sell it sooner or should you sell it faster or slower? I mean, you know, we, we just... We just want to get to, to Florida, you know, by school. I mean, do you, what, what price do you think that you can get for it then? Well, I, here's the thing. I, the only thing I know for sure is that these homes that are sold are showing you what happened in the past. It does not predict the future. And I know there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. Here comes the, the two things I know for sure. There's only two things I know for sure, Jeff. Number one is there'll be winners and losers in this market. And clearly you want to be a winner. The second thing I know for sure is that you can't win in this market unless you're in this market. So my question is, do you want to, we can start at 350 if you want to. There's only one of three things that can happen. And based on one of those, the third thing is it can sell. But based on the other two, we'll know, that I'll know what to tell you to do next. However, if it's going to be worth less every day and 350 is aggressive, how long is it going to take you to realize that we may have to reposition? Uh, you know, I, I would assume that, you know, we could give it a month. Okay. So, and so the month then would put us into uh, the 1st of August and you would need to be in Florida when? In September? Yeah, by the time school starts. We, ideally by September 1st. So do you see that's going to be a little bit of a challenge maybe? Yeah, I guess, I guess it is. So here's the thing. And I'm, I'm off script now. Just I'm letting you go. This guy's got motivation. I do not get into a, a cage fight, fighting match with a seller if they want to be a little aggressive on price, if they have motivation. I want to get the listing signed. I'm, yes, he, I'm doing my best to tell him the side effects that could, he could sell it for less by waiting. I'm doing my best in a condensed role play of demonstrating there could be a price to him. If he put prices at too high, the market may be moving away from him. However, if he pushed, and he's a seven or eight, if he pushed me basically and said, no, 350, I said, okay, well, here's the thing, Jeff, at 350, do you win? I win too. I'm on your team. So let's sign a listing agreement at 350. And I'll tell you what, would you, would you be willing to evaluate it in a week? Yeah, I mean, we, we certainly could do that. I think we can give it a week. So I'll stop. And, and Jeff's got minutes. a ton of experience. He's got as much as I do right now. And so you can give me your two cents worth and I don't care, I mean, uh, what you like, what you didn't like, what you done different, et cetera, before we go into your role play, is that um, what's your take on it? How did you feel as a seller? I mean, I, I think it was great because, because you, were, you were asking really good questions. You're probing on motivation. You were leading. You were repeating and improving. You made me feel comfortable. Um, you had asked what was important about the move, and, and I think that that was great. Um, I liked when you had said the, you have the three choices. The third was a sell. The other two is you could either, either you can win or lose, right? And the only way you're going to win is, uh, is, is, uh, being in the market. Right. You said something along that, along those lines. That was cool. I like that. Um, no, I felt good. I felt good that, you know, you were, you were, it wasn't, you were letting me figure it out, right? You were asking good questions and based upon my answers, I was figuring it out that, I might not actually get 350, right? So it was already prepping me and future pacing me that that's most likely not going to happen. And then you said, well, what would happen if it didn't? And then you put me into a corner that, oh, well, that probably isn't going to work 
you want to get this, you want to get to Florida by September. See how that's a problem. No, I didn't so dig into his motivation and all that only from a time standpoint, you know, how you're going to get to feel when you get there in September. I, I just kind of went over that. So here's my question to you, Jeff. What question, because you're very skilled at real estate, what question were you dying for me to ask that I didn't ask? Because maybe we play, we play this game a little bit different. Um, so one thing that you didn't maybe get into and ask was you'd asked about, okay, so I said 350 as far as sales price. And you would ask me, was that a price you wanted the net or you wanted the sell for? I said, well, 350 is what I want to get. But you didn't ask me, what do I want to net? Or what would you want to walk away with? So I didn't get clarity on that when I, cause I interpreted that when you, the way I interpreted your answer was that was their sales price. You said, I know there's commission, this, that, and the other. So did I, did I misinterpret you? Well, no, no, you, you interpreted it correctly as far as the price. The challenge was that what we find is that sellers might think, so many times sellers don't understand what the actual closing costs are. They might think it's a total of 10%. So by selling it for 350, you know, then he might think in his mind, well, I'm going to net 315 or whatever that number is, right? And in reality, he probably would end up netting closer to 325, which would therefore allow you to list it for 339 and get him closer to his net. You follow me? Like how many times have we had where we get into it, well, tell me what's the price that you're, you're ultimately looking to net? And then they give you a number that's actually a lot less than actually what they would net because they think that, well, there's going to be commission, there's transfer tax it's, that's way higher than they thought, other closing costs that they think they're going to pay, which they don't, you know, that kind of thing. So, so the that's net was, was something, it was, was one thing that I was thinking there. That's a great pearl, you guys. Clarity is power. Uh, awesome. Anything else that it was maybe uh, left out that would be a good learning experience for these guys on here? I think it was a great role play. Um, you know, I like, I like the fact that, you know, you didn't, you really didn't need to get into the, the, the market, uh, the marketing plan, right? It was something that came up. I think we always experience that. Sellers want to want to say things because it sounds like that's something they should say, but the reality is they're just saying it and it, sometimes it's just saying it and doesn't really mean that they actually need that info. Like I think with this role play was how much, you know, and time frame and how, and I want to get the best price. I think my house is the greatest ever because of what I did to it, right? That was important to me as a seller. And we kept on going back at that. And it really didn't matter as much on the, on the marketing plan. I know I threw that in there, but that does happen. But that was good that you realized that and, and it kind of just went back to, okay, let's talk about price. What's interesting, did you, were you aware that a couple of times, and I thought maybe you did it as a trick because sellers do this because they think they need to do it. You attempted to trap me into saying what I think I could get for it. Right. Right. Now, did you do yes, that on purpose? Yes. Well, I, yeah. Well, I want to hear what you have to say. What do you think you can get for it? And that was awesome because, you, you know, it's what we learned is the fact that let's not determine the price. Let's get them to determine it by asking good questions. You know, the moment that we start telling is, is when we're, you know, we start to back up a, a bit, you know, get, getting out of that and, uh, and cornered. So that was, yeah, it was good. For yeah, sure. I, I, was just I noticed you, did, you didn't say it. You just asked another question. Yeah, you guys on the call here, here's the thing. You set expectations, don't set prices because in a changing market, you could lose either way. So awesome job. Thank you for that and even your feedback on that. So let's turn the tables. And we have a what, question on chat real quick. Sure, um, Sunny, what is it? Uh, do you use the standard of needing to see one to two showings a week to know price is right or 12 showings and no offer means too high? What numbers do you use as a guideline? So Jeff, I'll give you, go ahead and you can answer that and then I'll give you uh, my answer on that. Sure, so what we use is, we use a 5% and 10% rule. Here's ultimately what we say. And by the way, we put this in our listing agreements as a separate document that, that explains the following. Basically we say something to the fact that, um, that if a home was on the market the first 21 days, no offers, low activity, say five showings or less, the home's overpriced by 10% on the market the first 21 days, lots of showings, five or more, and no offers, then you're overpriced by 5%. And so we write that in our listing agreements as a second document to let them know that that's the conversation we're gonna be having after the 21st day, based upon five, five showings or less, no offers, you're overpriced by 10%, five showings or more, uh, 
no offers, overpriced by 5%. Well, uh, that's, here's the thing, guys. My phone keeps ringing. My wife is calling me, so I'm in trouble. I didn't answer twice. So here's the thing, you guys. For him to be able to do that, I know NAR quotes stats, and I don't put any, any, any credence in what NAR says because there's no one, one size fits all. Jeff would have to know his market to do that. Don't quote that unless you know your market because yours could be a little bit different. Although what he's saying is true. This right here, Jeff, is kind of what I, uh, this is what I use right here. Uh, if you can see it, this is my, um, the three outcomes. Does that come through? Can you see that, old guy? I can't see it in detail, but yeah, I can see, I can see what you got there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, first outcome is low to no showings, uh, which means you're too high, way too high. Showings and no offers you're a little bit too high, third outcome it sells. And what I did, because every market's different, this, this slide is on my, is on my webpage, uh, Denny Delivers Training uh, Facebook page. I used to have across the bottom a, a showing tracker. However, I, I noticed that certain price, mar price ranges are different. When we get into luxury homes, well, you're lucky to have 12 showings. Right. So, when you're talking about your market in general, probably your sweet spot, your numbers hold up. I don't know what happens when you get into the outlying market centers. Is your wife calling you too, or is that Kristen calling you? No, exactly. No, I'm looking for one of my listening groups of having laying around here because what we also do is is you know that you know ever see the graph that's used? It's a it's also like a um, it's time a activity curve. curve. Yeah, 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 exactly. We use that too, right? And it's part part of a visual, and then we use the they use the the activity. Um, and, and time frame one as well. And then that, that is where we write in about no showings, no offers, 10%, little showings, whatever, time frame. I like the fact you're using graphics and showing them instead of just telling them. So awesome. Right. So what role play would you like to do, Jeff? Um, I, I mean, I would say let's do a, let's do a seller, let's do, let's do an expired script. Want to do that? Sure. Is it, uh, would anyone on the call like to be the expired seller? Got to be in a quiet spot. I and, will. All right, Barbara. So awesome, Barbara. Now remember, he was he was at eight and a half, nine and a half difficulty for me. <laughs> so don't don't be a lay down. Just be you know we're we're southern, so you know maybe give him a six or seven. Okay, doc. Sounds good. Go ahead. Ring, right. ring. Okay, so so um, so what I'll do is I'm just going to go for the appointment, okay, to to meet with Barbara. Okay, right. love that'll it. That'll be the goal. All right, so all right, ring ring. Hello. Hello, I'm looking for Barbara. Um, this is her. Oh, hi, Barbara. Um, this is Jeff Quinton over here at Keller Williams Realty. And I'm oh sure my you God, you're like the 27th realtor that's called me this morning already. I know, I know. Oh Everyone is calling. You want to sell my house? I get it. I want to sell your house. I understand every morning. You're going to do a better me. job than anybody else, right? I probably you're going to not going to do that good of a job at all. Probably not. Nope, not at all. But I'm just curious. I just want to know when you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home, Barbara. You know, I don't know. Honestly, I'm we're thinking about taking it off the market for a while because you know having the house clean all the time and doing it is such a hassle, and. Um, I just feel like I need a little bit of a break from that. Sure, no, I appreciate that. So it's kind of a hassle a little bit, cleaning the house up and so forth. And so right now, the goal may be to take just a break. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm just wondering- and I have well, dogs in the house. I always have to put them outside and somebody has to be here to show the house. It's just, you know, it's a nightmare kind of. So I really yeah. need to, um, I don't know. I'm just feeling like I need to take a break from that. If I could sell it quickly, it'd be different. But if it's going to take, you know, months and months again on the market. Okay, no problem. I understand. So it's been a little bit of frustrating not getting a home sold. I understand that of it. Barbara, let me ask you one quick question. If I could sell your home within the next 30 days, net the price you're looking for, would that pose a problem? No, actually, if you could sell it within 30 days, um, but I don't know how you would do that. The previous realtor wasn't able to do that. I can see that. I see that you've been on the market quite a bit of time. But Barbara, let me ask you, if you sold this home, where would you go next? Um, well, ideally, we'd be moving to um, Tennessee. Good for you, moving to Tennessee. And how soon did you want to be there? We're a little flexible on that, to be honest with you. What did you say your name is again? 
It's Jeff Quinton from Keller Williams. Okay, so Jeff, we're flexible on that. It's it's more of a want to go instead of a need to go. So so we're we're pretty flexible on it. But the thing of it is, like I said, I just get so tired of having to show the home, deal with the dogs, make sure everything's perfect looking. Yeah, I know. I can understand. It can be frustrating. But the goal is to get to Tennessee. And as I mentioned earlier, if I can make that happen, get your home sold within the next 30 days. That would be okay with you, though, correct? Yeah, it would. Um, so let me ask you a question. If, sure. if you're to do that, what would you be doing differently that the previous realtor didn't do? I would get your home sold. That would be different. Oh, what a great answer. <laughs> and, and Barbara, let me ask you. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, what do you think stopped your home from selling? Um, you know, I honestly don't know. It's a really nice house and um, it's, you know, I honestly, I have no idea why it didn't sell. It seems like it's a yeah. pretty strong market and I'm actually surprised it didn't sell. I have to agree with you. I mean, it is a beautiful home. I've seen the pictures online. It looks like it's in great shape. And, you know, I, I have to agree, I'm very surprised it didn't sell. So I'm just curious. I mean, how did you happen to pick the last agent you listed with? Um, that agent was referred to me by someone, a friend of mine who had used them. In the past. Okay, good for you. So it was referred to you from a friend. And was there anything that agent did that you liked best? Um, well, they were really professional. They explained everything to me that was going to take place. Um, I think they were pretty flexible as far as me needing to be home to deal with the dogs and everything. Um, so we set up the showings so that I could um, change the time or refuse the time if need be. Okay, good. So at least they were very flexible and they worked with you on the showings. That's good. And, and uh, but let me ask you, I mean, what do you feel they should have done? Sell the house. <laughs> yeah, sell the house, right? Yeah. And I mean, ultimately, I know it's been frustrating for you and you might want to take a break and I understand that. And yet, what will you expect from the next agent you choose? Your ability to sell a house. You know, I mean, I, I, you're the professional. I don't know what it takes to get the house sold, but that's the whole reason I'm hiring a professional. For sure. You know, you want another professional that knows what they're going to do and how to do it. I understand that. And so then, Barbara, have you already chosen an agent to work with? No, uh-uh. You haven't. Okay, good. Well, I would like to apply for the job of selling your home. Are you at all familiar with the techniques that I use to sell homes? No. You're kidding. Well, what would be the best time I could come by and show you? I'm available, say, today at 4 or tomorrow at 5. What would be best for you? Well, how much time is this going to take, Jeff? It won't take very long. Maybe between 5 and 15 minutes. I'll, cool. share, with you, I'll share with you, number one, why your home failed to sell, and number two, how we sold 220 homes as your home didn't sell. And then you can judge for yourself if our marketing plan works for you or not. It'll take about 15 minutes. Okay, so well, do you have an idea why my home didn't sell? I know exactly why, but I'd like to come over and take a look at it. I'm available today at four or tomorrow at five. What's best for you? Okay, well, if you can come over tomorrow at five, my husband will be home and we'd both be able to talk to you at that time. Okay, I appreciate that. Then tomorrow at five o'clock it is. I'll look forward to seeing you and your husband. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Thank you. So you guys give us, give me some uh, feedback. What'd you, what'd you hear that you like Jeff do? What kind of notes did you make? He just went through the script, you know, one by one by one, and it was flowing until it closed all the way at the end. It didn't uh, let some objections stop him. It just kept going. Well, awesome. Great, uh, David. What else did you guys hear that you liked? Just, I um, love the confidence. Um, as being the sell, playing the seller role, um, he never argued with anything that I said. He was just always very uh, assure, reassuring. Mm -hmm, I understand. I understand. But if I could, da -da 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 -da, then would you? So he was always just kind of saying, oh, I completely understand, but if I could do it differently, would you be open to talking to me about it? Awesome. Anybody else? One more. Like I said, I like the confidence a lot. He was very, very confident. Um, he, towards the end, he said, I know exactly why I didn't sell. 
um, yeah, I, I don't know if he really knew it, but but he sounded very confident. Well, that, that and I don't know if that's a fairy script or whatever. Obviously, he's practiced this. And what's interesting about that last statement, I know exactly why it didn't sell. He did not pause after that. He right. went right in. So I just take 15 minutes to come over and take a look at it. So here's the thing here. And here's what I noticed. Barbara, the seller was basically like, like most sellers when to get him on the phone. Uh, like that's a 15th call in like 40 minutes and no one's looked at it the last six months or frustrated as I have the slide up, you know, they're not ready to get back into the process. They've just fallen out of a bad relationship. They're not ready for a new relationship yet. And did you see, did you feel, Jeff, did you feel, it's kind of like the fishing analogy. You let the bass run and just let them take line, let them take line, let them take line. Did you feel when she started to come back towards you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right after I, I, I matched her with her frustration. When it's once I asked her if she sold the home, where would she go next is when she opened up. Well, we want to go to Tennessee is when I felt like she came back. Well, you know, when you do this enough and obviously he's practiced, that's why, and it's easier for you learning because you can have scripts in front of him, in front of you. I don't know that he had scripts in front of him. I think he's got it mastered where he was just basically list. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There you go. I thought maybe he was looking out the window, you know, at the beach or something like that. So there you go. It's exactly what we teach in bold. He has his scripts in front of him. He's been, has 5,000 transactions. That's Tom Brady. Sorry about that. We have him in Tampa now. That's Tom Brady wearing his little uh, plays on his wrist. If that is not a lesson to us, you guys, what is? Because here's the thing. When you listen, I, I, was, I was actually, you know, in taking some notes, and I'm, all of a sudden I said, all of a sudden, oh, she's coming back to him now. And then here's the other thing. Did you notice how he changed and started mirroring and matching almost, almost instinctively? She went from a seven or eight, now she was below a five. And what he focused on originally to get there was the process. She wanted to get to Tennessee and, she, and he said he basically wanted to make it easier for her. And so, I mean, and you see him sweating at all? That anything, that anything... Uh, here's one thing that surprised me, Jeff, and, and you answered the question for me. I thought you would have closed for the appointment sooner versus, and, and, and tell me why, because I don't do expired calls. You started, well, what about the agent? What was wrong with the last agent? Blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, well, it seemed like you had her ready for the appointment before that, yet you went into it further. Tell me more about that. Well, I didn't want to, I, I didn't, I, and again, I could have done that and gone a little quicker on it, but she was a little frustrated in the process and, and ultimately wanted to take a break. So I needed to build a little more, a little more rapport, ask her what was important or what she might expect from the next agent, you know. So I wanted to build that a little bit more in so that I could overcome more of the take a break from it um, thought. But I would, if you noticed, she started coming, so she came back to me and then she started to get a little bit more well, you know, what are you going to do differently kind of thing came back around. Now she started, started being more like, er, 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 right. And then I had kind of just went for a close right then was well, Barbara, let me ask you, because remember she said, well, let me ask you a question. What do you think you're going to do different? And I said, I'm going to sell your home. That's different. Right. And, and then, so I had to like, just quickly answer that. But then I said, well, let me ask you. And then that next part was, if I could sell your home within the next 30 days, would it pose a problem? Now, in most cases, everyone's going to say that's not going to be a problem. They would love to sell their home. So I had to like go back in and just kind of shut it down and take more of the control back. But knowing that I was going to ask a question that would deliver a great response that I can now lead with. So if I could sell your house in the next 30 days, would that pose a problem? Well, no, that would be great. How are you going to do that? Right? Well, that's exactly why we need to get together. Right? Or, you know, I was able to just kind of put that, and that's not part of the script. That's just a close outside of the script that I inserted it in. So do you get a lot of your business from expires? We get about 23%. Yeah, we do a lot. And so do you make calls on expires every day? We do. Yeah. I assume that we, we do. And now you're, you're managing a team. You have an expansion operation as well. Are you actually doing lead gen calls? Not every day, but I do. Not as much okay. as I used to. Not as much as I used to. But so, I, mean, I have... I'm old school. I mean, I have, this is my seven day lead folder. I'm going to try to get a contract in seven days. So 
It's not, that's my CRM. How did you get to the point? And, there's, and here's the, you know, there's people that know what to do in real estate and they don't do it. And I say all the time, it's impossible to fail at real estate. You can only quit. And generally the people, the reason people fail is they get balled up over a perfect stranger saying no, which doesn't mean no, and it's not rejection. So how did you get from where you were to where you are because you were so natural. David even said, look how natural he is, blah, blah, blah. Well, you, were, you didn't start there. What was your process? What do you teach your team members to do to get through the ugly before they get to the good? Well, learning what to say and how to say it and the tonality and, and the rate of speech and all the stuff that you guys are covering is, 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 is key. I think is that when you learn a script, learn the objections at, a, at, a, at such a high level or a good level, your confidence goes way up, right? And it's all about just building confidence. And especially more than ever right now that we're in with regards to COVID and pandemic. And right now you better, we all better be speaking the highest amount of confidence ever. Just one little bit of unconfidence, you're gonna, in anything, like right? whether it's about how I show my home and, and, and what can I, what's going on in the market. And so it's confidence. So, you know, how, how do we get there? Um, you know, we do a lot of role playing just like you guys do. Our agents are required to have five role play partners a uh, half hour a day. And we, we press on that. We, we, um, we write our scripts, hand write them. We chant them. We record them. We, we actually have a script master class we go through and they become script certified. Um, and then we actually, at the end of that, we put an agent in front of them, in front of us as in a, in a conference room. Um, and we do a live listing presentation. That's how we we, we actually rate them at the end of it, they pass or fail, become script certified. So, um, you know, we work on it every day. And so that our agents are, are what we feel is the most skilled agents in the marketplace. Sonny, I hope you're taking notes. That's the director of growth. So, hey, listen, um, what a treat it is to have you on the call. Do you have time for one more, maybe five or six minute role play? Yeah, yeah for sure. So what would you guys like to hear him do? Buyer, or seller, or what? You just hit the uh, uh, forest cell button or the expired out of the park. What would you guys like to hear? Don't be shy. Come on. Buyer? Can we do it? Buyer? Are you saying buyer, I have, you guys? Uh, Christina Come wants on. forest cell by owner. Okay, by owner. All right, so uh, who would like to be the buy owner? Matt, why don't you be buy owner? Sounds good. All right, so what are you going to be? You got to be at least, he's from, he's from New York, New Jersey. Got to be at least a seven, seven and a half. Ready, go. Oh, okay, he, he turn into the buy owner scripts. You see that, you guys? I am. <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the buy owner, um, I'm going to ultimately obviously go for the appointment, of course. Um, understand it's a, the mindset is a little different right now for sale by owner um, and it's building relationship and then earning that and then getting the listing is what we teach so but I'm gonna go for the appointment anyway I'm so, call one right this is call one this will be call one let's just do it all right here we go okay so ring ring hello hello I'm looking for Matt uh, speaking hey Matt I'm just calling about your home for sale are you the owner uh, yeah I am who are you okay Wonderful. This is Jeff Quinton over at Keller Williams Realty. And I'm just doing a survey of all of the sale owners in the Jeff, area. Jeff, hold on sure. a minute. Let me stop you right there. Look, Go I ahead. don't have yeah. any intention of, of using an agent, uh, and I Actually, appreciate that. My question is, do you have a buyer? I, I don't really know if we have a buyer, and I understand you don't want to. You don't want to use an agent. I don't blame you for not using an agent. If you can sell it on your own, I think you should. Well, so I, I just look. I think I can get a lot of money without an agent, and and save I agree. commission. I think that you can, and I think you should. I'm just doing a survey of all the for sale owners in the area. And I was just wondering if you sold this home, where would you go next? Well, we're, we're kind of downsizing. Uh, our kids have left the house. We're looking for something all on the main level. Good for you. So you're downsizing, your kids are out of the house. So now your next home is uh, you're looking for just a, a one level home. Is that correct? Yeah. Ranch style, uh, ranch maybe, style. maybe with an, a walkout, but and I think we found something, but uh, we got to get our household. Wonderful. And is the home that you're buying it for sale by owner or are you buying it through a realtor? I, uh, I think it's got a realtor sign in it. We haven't contacted them because we just, we want to make sure we get ours sold first. Okay. Good for you. So you want to get your home sold first. And so how soon did you like to at least be in that new home or make a move? Well, like I said, kids are, kids are gone. There's nothing we have to worry about as far as school districts or anything like that. So we've got some time. 
Okay, good, perfect. And I'm just wondering, I mean, how would you rate your motivation to move? Let's say from a scale of one to 10. I'd say six and a half. About a six and a half, good for you. And, and I noticed that, you know, you have your home on, on Zillow, um, which is a great tool, by the way, for marketing. I'm just wondering though, is there any other methods you're using for marketing your home? Well, we got Craigslist. We got uh, there's nextdoor.com. We put we put it on. Uh, uh, we haven't used the fizbo.com yet because they they charge a fee, and in, of course Zillow charges more if, if you want more pictures on there. But I understand. So you have it on Zillow. You got it on Craigslist. That's wonderful. Um, and then uh, and so you're out there on the internet a lot, which is I, I, that's that's great. I think that's where buyers obviously are going. Um, and I see that right now you're you're listed for two ninety nine. Um, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and Matt, I'm just wondering, how did you happen to pick that sales price? Well, I mean, I've been looking at our our neighborhood, and they've been anytime something comes up, they get sold right away, and and that's about the price point of, of you know that they're selling at. Okay, good. So you've noticed other home sales in the neighborhood. And yeah. yeah. Quickly. yeah. Perfect. And. Uh, are you prepared to adjust your price down when working with a buyer? You know, I, I don't know. I've, it just depends on, on what they come to us with and, and whether or not we like the, the, uh, the price. Okay, good. So, I mean, are you flexible? Are you, are you looking to negotiate? Are you pretty firm at the 299? You know, I, I think we can get 299. I haven't seen too many houses that are that have sold for lower than that, and I certainly don't want to leave anything on the table. Certainly, it's the goal is to get as much as possible. I understand fully, and 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 Matt, let me ask. I mean, why have you decided to sell yourself rather than list with a real estate agent? I, like I said, I mean, I've seen a couple other for sale by owners get sold pretty quick, uh, and you know, if I can save. 10 grand on commission, that's, that's money to do on the next property that I can use to, you know, to any, make any enhancements on it. Yeah, no, without a doubt, if you could save 10,000, that's a lot of money to be able to move forward in a new home. I understand that completely. And uh, I'm just wondering though, I mean, if you were to list, which agent would you list with? Well, uh, I haven't really thought about that. Uh, like I said, we're, we're, we're not that much of in a hurry, and I think at, at the point we'll probably just interview agents if we need to. Okay, perfect. So, I mean, at some point you might, if obviously you're not in any hurry, but just curious, Matt, though, I mean, how much time will you take before you'll consider interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home? Well, let's see. Your house has been on the market for two weeks, uh, probably another month. Okay, good for you. So somewhere around, you know, roughly August 1st or so, another month, you'll give it? You bet. And, uh, you bet. What has to, I just wonder, though, what has to happen before you'll consider hiring an agent? If we don't get any offers by then. Okay, good for you. So no offers. You'll definitely consider then by August 1, interviewing or at least hiring an agent. Yep. Wonderful. Okay, good. And uh, I'm just curious, Matt, though, um, if I could sell it, though, between now and then, uh, let's say in the next 30 days, net you the number you're looking for, would that pose a problem? Well, if you bring a buyer and, and write an offer for the buyer, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, no, Perfect. it wouldn't present a problem, but we'd certainly take a look. No problem. That sounds good to me. And, and you know, love to stop by and take a look at the home and share with you our marketing plan so that when you are ready to interview an agent, that you already have it. And we'd love to be that agent of choice. Um, Matt, I'm just wondering, are you familiar with the techniques I use to sell homes? Well, no, I, I'm not really familiar with any techniques that agents use, um, but I, you know, I'm not sure that we're we're ready for anyone to come over and talk to us about it. No, no, no I understand. And most sellers, like yourself, for sale by owner, try on their own, and I get that, and that's typically what they do. And and yet, after we meet, typically, once we show them our marketing plan and how we actually net them more than what they're going to net on their own, they typically hire us. So, I mean, I love to just stop by, look at your home, see if your property qualifies for our buyers. Um, What's the best time it would be for you? I'm available today at four or tomorrow at five. You know, let me talk to my wife about that and get back to you. And, and let's assume that your wife said yes, right? For the moment she says yes. Um, are you in agreement with me just to stop by, say today at four or tomorrow at five? What's best for you? 
Yeah, I, I don't, uh, you know, if she said yes, let's just put it off till tomorrow then. So that okay. for certain. All right. No problem. Now she's the boss, right? So we know, we know that you're going to have to convince her. At least I can talk to her, but. Well, don't I'm tell just, her that. I won't. I won't. <laughs> she, we already know that we're, we're there, but you know what? We'll, we'll assume she's a yes. I'm going to mark down. I'm going to stop by tomorrow at five and I'm going to bring my marketing plan just to show you what I do. But here's the good news. At least I come by and see your home. And then I can see if your property qualifies for our current buyers. And that when you decide to get on the market, at least I can bring my buyers either before then or let's say by August 1st, whatever's best for you. Well, what, let me ask you a question. What, why, you mentioned you might have buyers. Why would you not have called me to show them the house before now? In fact, that's why I'm calling you because I love to stop by and take a look and see if they would make, actually work for our buyers. So I can stop by tomorrow at five and then we'll take a look and I can show you what we do in case you decide to hire us. Fair enough? That's fair. All right. I appreciate it. I'll see you then. Wow. You don't want to be a for sale by owner or an expired listing in uh, the Jersey Shore because that's exactly what you're going to get. Now, that was brilliant. Anybody have any ahas about that? We got a couple of minutes here. Let's give him some love. <laughs> I think it was awesome. Yes. Yeah. He, he continued to reassure me. Uh, he, he continued to, uh, he didn't dismiss what I said to him. He, he, he uh, validated it. His acknowledgments were awesome. He never fought you on anything. His tone, and I, here's the thing. I close my eyes, Jeff, and I'm listening to Dave Norberg. That's, ex I don't know, is, is that fairy scripts? It is, it is. Yeah, Dave and I obviously grew up on fairy scripts. So Dave's awesome, especially for sale by owners. Yeah. Uh, well, we, you've played that video in bold forever. And uh, he was one of my, my first role play partner, our uh, celebrity partner. And it, it, you guys are just the same. So what else did you guys hear? Because that was, that was genius. Thank you. Jeff? Yes, sir. Go ahead. When, when you go through a script and let's say the for sale by owner tells you, asks you, why, why are you asking me all these questions? How would you respond to that? Well, when, so, so it's a good question you're asking. But for sale by owner will ask that question of us when they feel like you are asking them questions. Um, meaning that you feel more drill sergeant-like, you feel more like you are, are going through a script. Um, I don't know, maybe you guys felt that way. I'm always, my goal is not to make it feel that way. My goal is to be able to make it feel more conversational by mm -hmm. repeating and reproving and asking the question and letting them answer and trying to zip it so they know I'm, I feel like I care. Yeah, um, it, I, my, you know, if I could chime in, here's what I felt. I felt like I wasn't being handled. In other words, it, it was conversational. Most agents tend to want to handle a for sale by owner and, and keep them caged in. Uh, yeah. They didn't come across that way at all. I mean, it happens. So, so Dave, I mean, if, you know, if I get, well, why are you asking me all these questions? then I'm going to say, well, I'm just asking these questions so I can understand a little bit more about you and your home so that when I bring a buyer that they'll be informed and the more informed I am is the better informed we all will be. You know, I'm just going to try to like put it back about them. Right. right. You know, right. I, I would say something like that, you know, but if, you, if you're getting a lot of times, why are you asking me all these questions and I don't want to answer anymore, then, then it's probably more the resisting of the way that's way those questions are being answered or being asked and you're feeling that you're not listening or feeling that you're not repeating and approving. You know, there's no, there's no flow to it. It's more like, er, 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 er. you know, it's kind of like, you know, the awkward eighth grade dance, you know, you know, you're going this way and the girl's going that way. You got to uh, align, you got to align together. And then typically once that happens, you won't, you won't get that. Mm, okay. Exactly. If you guys went to top golf, which are, which are fun. This is nothing more than a happy hour with a golf club. And you watched a, watched a professional golfer versus just a Saturday golfer. Could you tell a difference in the way they swing? And so what you're looking at here is hours of practice. And basically, here's, here's one of my things that I've noticed. And there was a, one of the comments that came up, Jeff, when, the, when Matt, the seller, mentioned marketing, that was a question. And the question goes in, would you not go back to unloading the car 
and which is what we teach, get all that out before you start handling it. Other than marketing, you know, what was, you know, what else would be important to you? Here's the thing that I noticed, you guys. He just stuck with a script. He didn't go down bunny trails. He didn't talk. He didn't ask a bunch of personal questions. He, he stayed with a script. I guess it's probably a good script because it works. And when you start adding your own lines, I mean, you know, uh, you know, Freebird song just sounds different when people add their own words to it. I just like the way it's written. So I, I thought that was one of the things I noticed because there were, and, and the other thing I, I wonder, Jeff, is this, is that he wants to wait 30 days. And it's not in the script because your script couldn't be market specific. However, would you, do you adapt it to say, well, you know, based on that house you saw that you want to call on, do you think that'll be around in 30 days? I mean, you never took them to pain. Would you do that in real life? Yeah, I think so. And, 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 and <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. And, and, but he wasn't, you know, remember I asked him on a scale of one to 10, where's your motivation? He said it's six and a half. A six and a half, I'm probably not even going out there. I mean, six and a half today is like, Jesus, that's a 65% committed to selling. I'm looking for those that are like eight or above right now that really, you know what I mean? So this is someone that doesn't have high level motivation to make a move in any time soon. They're going to Tennessee, but there was no, um, right? That's where he was going, right? No, no, that was Barbara. I forget where he was going. I was down, <laughs> downsizing. Downsizing, I'm sorry. Yeah, going yeah, to meet downsizing. Barbara in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, downsizing. And, but, and the kids are out of, out, out hey, of the Hey, hey, I'm married. I'm not going to see anyone else. Right. <laughs> but there was no real, there was no real urgency there. So, so in what I heard from him, if I would have start started down the road of, well, that house isn't there and he hasn't even been in it yet. He didn't know the realtor. He probably would have came back with, well, there'll be another one. Right. Or, 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 oh, I, get it. You know, I don't know. So that's kind of why I didn't do, but what I, what I, what I did was that I use is in the beginning, um, you know, if, if you were to sell, where would you go? Well, we have an eye on the home. Now I inserted in there. Well, is the home? Are you buying it for sale by owner, or are you buying a home from an agent? So normally I would go back around at some point and say, "Okay, good." So what I'm hearing you say is you're looking to buy this house, and um, it's currently listed with a realtor, correct? And he would say, "Yes." So wouldn't you feel the same way that you're a buyer looking to work with a realtor? Don't you feel that other realtors are also looking to work with a buyer, or other buyers are looking to work with a realtor? Like. Like I'm, I want to at some point get him to say, I'm looking at a home that's listed with a realtor. So wouldn't you right. agree that all most buyers like yourself are going to not buy it for sub owner. They're going to work with an agent. So let's go ahead and do the right thing and get you exposed to the agents. Yeah. So I thought that was a very strategic move on the chessboard. And you know what he is, he is doing his best to triangulate his pieces to get him into a kind of a, a check situation. So uh, Jeff, Obviously, Ocean City, the, the QuintonGroup.com. Jeff, would you give me your number one more time, please? Sure. 609. Uh, the office is 609-398-JEFF, which is easy to remember. But my cell is 609-602-8488. I tell you, this has been awesome, you guys. Uh, Jeff, I can't thank you enough. It was a great role play. I learned from it. And Barbara, you are asked if these scripts are available. Yeah, I think if you go to Ferry's website, I think you can get some of the scripts right from the, the Mike or Tom Ferry website. Yeah, you can go to MikeFerry.com. They're all in there. And that, that's the scripts that I just learned on. I mean, but the reality is, is bold scripts are almost identical. It's just that, you know, Diana took them and tweaked them with a few words. And they're really the same thing. It's all good. I mean, what we learn at KW is the same exact, same exact thought behind it all. Well, I can't thank you enough. The only, the only next obligation you have, which I forgot to tell you, you get to nominate the next, the next celeb. So be thinking about it. I love it. it. All, All right. right. Thank I'll, you, man. I'll, anytime, guys. Appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, right. Jeff. Thank be, you, Danny. Be safe up there. Thank, thank you. you so much. Helpful as yes. always. Thank you. thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Danny. Yep, you betcha. Thanks.